Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we're back aboard the boat. I've uh, been doing some work on her, bits and pieces during the, the last week or so. Uh, whilst I've been here in Portugal, I'm due to go back to the UK for a few days, but uh, I'll be back fairly sharpish and we'll crack on with the boat. Uh, she's been delayed going into the shipyard because some of the current yachts that are in there are being worked on have overrun. And so we're just waiting for space so she can get in. She's probably running about two to three weeks late at the moment getting in, which is a little bit frustrating. We would hope to have had it finished uh, before July started, but that doesn't look like it's going to happen now. It's probably going to be sometime mid to the end of July before she's fully ready uh, and back to go into the water. She won't be entirely finished. Uh, the decking won't be done. Uh, the seats won't be recovered at that point, but all the, the major engineering work will be done. Uh, we've got quite a bit of work to do in the uh, engine room. I'll show you that uh, in a moment and you, we'll run through basically what we're going to do with that. Uh, we've also obviously then as she's come out of the water and that's been finished there's some bits and pieces to do changing uh, cables for throttle cables and gear cables down to those legs that are at the back. Uh, they need doing and we're probably going to update the throttles at the same time. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to order some throttles this week so we've got new throttles as well as new throttle cables uh, and new gear cables because uh, she has a little bit of a slug and responding those old uh, Volvo things. They're not exactly nice to look at either. So we'll get some decent uh, throttles uh, installed as well at the same time we change the throttle cables. Uh, and at the same time, obviously, she's going to be wrapped. So once they, they finished tinkering in her engine rooms and messing about, the guys will be coming along from the wrapping company to wrap her in her new colour scheme and to polish and uh, mirror the windows on the, on the windscreen and the side panels uh, windows. So uh, that's more or less that. There's some bits and pieces of jobs, which again, I'm about to show you now. I'll run through those for you. Okay, one of the jobs that I've done so far is revamp the deck shower. So this is just at the, the swim platform. You come back in and we've got that deck shower, uh, a whale uh, excellence deck shower as it's called. One of the taps was missing. This uh, The cold water tap was broken or pulled out whatsoever. And it looked like it had just been lost. And then I looked inside and the guy had done a bodged job of smashing a piece of cork in there obviously must have had a leak without the tap top being on it so I ordered two new tap tops it's not a difficult thing to do it took me about 15 20 minutes to scrape all the bits of cork out that he managed to cram in there I gave the shower head a quick clean up and that's come up pretty good uh, and so we now have a fully functioning deck shower again okay one of the jobs we've done so far is that old knackered bimini that was on top the the uh, the beige one that was full of holes and it was a knackered we changed that out for a new bimini um a black one that might give you some clue as to what color scheme is going to be like but uh, she's going to have a black bimini which she's gone on now we put that on a couple of days ago um i'll just one of these things i'll run through with you i went and got a quote for this i said that we were going to do some boating on a shoestring and i meant that we're going to keep this thing realistic so i, I went to the sail makers in uh in villamora uh, june sail makers and asked them how much it would cost me to make a bimini of this uh, size, which is about two meters by two meters. Let's have a quick look up. You can see there, two meters by two meters, three ribs, nothing special about it. Just in this uh, normal sort of sun, uh, sunscreen cover and uh, the PVC in it to keep it waterproof. So they gave me a quote of 1,900 euros, about 1,700 pounds. Can you believe it for a six foot by six foot piece of cloth? Um, I then looked online and I found Bimini's in this size, which were going for 150 quid from some manufacturer in America. And I ordered one and it came within about eight days. So we saved ourselves an absolute fortune then. The unfortunate thing was that it had tubes here. So it would have meant take, it had tubes here where it meets this, where it meets the, the rails on the Bimini. They were just uh, like hollow tubes that you had here you can see there perhaps better and that would have meant taking the frame apart which is to be honest an absolute pain in the backside so i took it over to the sail makers here in albufera to a the company called blouse which is over in the shipyard and i asked the ladies there and carlos who runs it to just cut the tubes and sew me some zips in there which they did for an extra 100 euros so all in all it cost 250 euros uh, rather of oh, 250 pounds sorry well, that's not actually about 230 pounds rather than the nearly 2000 that they wanted from the sale makers in Villamora to make that piece of cloth always shop around you'll always get a better deal and uh, once everything's been done uh, we'll be ready to start going out and having some adventures on board the boat we re-registered her 
into her new registration in Poland. Uh, I'll get into that in a moment as to why. So she's re-registered and she has her new name, which again, I'll show you now. Okay, one of the jobs we're going to be doing today is we are going to be renaming the boat. So she's currently uh, called under her last registration, Lady Jenny. Uh, probably the guy's wife, I think, to be perfectly honest with you. Lots of men do that. They name a boat after the wife, thinking it's going to get them off the hook uh, for spending all that money and spending all that time, uh, rather than spending it with the wives. But it rarely ever works. So uh, Lady Jenny, I'm afraid, is not going to be her name anymore. We're going to put a new name to her. She's already been registered in a new uh, registration in that, uh, in that name. So that'll be getting changed. You'll see that in a moment. And as part of that, we will be removing the old registration number on there, the old SSR number. That is going to get changed as well. That's coming off and a new registration along with her new port of registration, which will be going on the back of the boat just by the electric uh, socket, so the shore power socket there. Um, there's another one on the other side. We're going to have to take her out and bring her back in. Uh, bow two to get that other name off the front uh, and once she's done she'll be ready for the next stage which will be the wrap okay one thing we also did is we changed the name as part of changing her registration and ownership so let me pull this fender up and you can see there when I pull back out of this out of the way that her new name is Summer Loving after the Grease song and again you'll notice that the, uh, the the text is in red and black that should give you some idea of what colour the wrap is going to be on here so her new name now is Summer Loving rather than being named after some boater's wife it always amazes me that men do this they buy a boat something which is absolutely their toy and then they think they're going to get away with it by naming it after the wife and the wife is suddenly going to accept it. <laughs> Very rarely ever works. Wives usually resent the boat and men just love it. They think by telling their wives uh, that, that they've named the boat after them, it's somehow going to be an easy ride for them. Anything but usually, to be honest with you. I thankfully don't have that problem. My husband hates boats. I don't have to name it after him. He just leaves me alone. <laughs> You'll also notice the registration has been changed uh, from... Uh, from a British registration to a Polish registration. She's now registered in Gdansk in Poland. I'll explain a bit more about that separately in this video. Uh, we're still waiting for the number. We, the number, the uh, vinyl numbers didn't turn up. So we've got it stuck on a bit of a sticker there, which we've laminated just for now to keep us legal by displaying the registered number. But that sticker will be here in a couple of days and I'll get that applied uh, just under the Gdansk. And then we'll know uh, that we'll be finished as far as the stickering goes. It's just the wrap to do on there and then a million other jobs. Okay, so why did we register the boat in Poland? Well, if you look around the, boat, the marina here, half the boats are registered in Poland. Practically everybody who's Portuguese who owns a boat registers it in Poland. And the reason for that is they have a very simple uh, system for boat registration for yachts under 15, or pleasure craft under 15 meters in Poland. Very, very simple to register a boat there. You do it once, it's a fee of about 500 euros, well, it's exactly 500 euros, and then it's another 200 euros or something like that, but it's 1,700, uh, 1, sorry, 170 euros for a Polish radio license uh, for the VHF on board. So roughly six, 700 euros, and on a boat this size, you have a, a Polish registration. The beauty of Polish registrations is they never expire. So if it's under 15 meters, there's no prerequisite for a marine survey, no matter how old the boat is. So a lot of boats, if you to register them in Europe, especially here in, in Portugal, you have to have, take them out of the water, have a survey done every so often, every so many years, and have a current up-to-date certificate. However, if it's registered in Poland, all the other European countries have to abide by Poland's uh, regulations as well, while the boat's in European waters. And so we're able to have a very simplistic system where she doesn't have to come out of the water every three years to have an inspection. She doesn't need to have her certificate uh, renewed every five years, as you do in many of the other jurisdictions, especially in the UK. Certainly, if you've got an SSR, small ships register, uh, as this boat was registered at the time, in the small ships register uh, it has to be done every five years if it's part one under the mca uh, and the maritime and coast guard agency uh, 
regulations where their part one registered as Andresa was and then again that needs to be done every five years if you let it lapse uh, effectively they'll come along and find you if you're out without a current certificate if you get pulled over by the uh, maritime police so it's easy to forget as well they don't bother sending you reminders it's your job to remember uh, to do that so you've got to keep remembering that to go through your paperwork and make sure set your dates to when to renew them with the Polish registration once in a lifetime that's it you never need to worry about it again so on Saturn absolutely spot on Let's go and have a look now at all the bits and pieces that are going to need to be done. So we have the engine bay open. I've removed the storage bin that sits over the back of the engines, just under the sun pad that's out there on the pontoon. So we can have a good look at these engines. As I said, the next major task will be this particular job of getting the engines back up to scratch they run there in absolutely you know reasonable operating fashion however they've been let go for the last sort of four or five years nobody's done that much with them other than give them the odd service so they really need looking after them. they're due to be serviced this week and then when they come out of the water they're going to have some major major work done on them so let's have a little look at them so here we are i'm gonna have to adjust this camera for you there we go so what we've got here is the uh, starboard side engine and the port side engine. Uh, they both had brand new starter motors on them. If you can see down there on the, the, uh, the port side engine, she's got a brand new water pump on there. This one here, um, the starboard engine was in fact changed a couple of years back. Oh, so they tell me it looks a bit older than that to me and if you look on the floor I don't know if you can just see it below it there is some evidence that it might be dripping so I'm going to get that changed it's not an expensive job it's about 150 euros or something like that for a new water pump so that's going to be done on there you'll notice a lot of the flywheels and the housings are, have got a bit of corrosion a bit of rust on there we'll take all that back and revamp that so it's uh, repainted and, and all looking good uh, the one thing that we will be doing is because these things are cooled by seawater they're not like the uh, the edges on andreza which were cooled through heat exchangers with normal coolant these are sea cooled so it draws raw water in from the ocean to cool the engine and then expels it back out through a set of uh, manifolds and the manifolds and the exhaust manifolds are where the, uh, the exhaust water comes out they come in through a set of risers which are those things you can see on top there and then they get circulated around the engine and then back out through the exhaust. Those manifolds should be changed about every four, about every five to six years. These don't look like they've been changed at all for about the past eight years. So they could go at any time. That's the last thing you want is a load of seawater actually getting into uh, your cylinders, etc. Because if they rust through into where the cylinder exhaust ports are, then you're going to end up with uh, with seawater in your engine. That's the last thing you want. So they're going to get changed. So we're having four new uh, exhaust manifolds there. We're also going to take all these flywheels off, have them repainted. We're also then going to change the gaskets on the risers. They're getting taken off. They're getting repainted and they are also getting uh, reinstalled with new gaskets. Same with the rubber hoses. All the exhaust hoses are coming off. They're having brand new exhaust hoses. All these rubber hoses that you can see that circulate the coolant and the oil around the engines, they're all getting changed. Uh, and then the whole thing will be tidy, tidied up again and will be uh, at that point uh, arranged so that they, they can uh, start and they look like brand new engines by the time we're finished with them. They work, they're in great mechanical order, they just need some love. That's all it is really. Uh, and it, all in all, it's going to cost about €5,000, as I said. Uh, at the same time, we're going to change the uh, cables for the, the throttles and for the gear change. The gear change one on the uh, on the port side, or the starboard side engine, sorry, is uh, a little slack. It's been stretched, I think, and it won't adjust anymore. So you have to shove it a little bit further forward to get it to engage, and that can be uh, a bit hairy sometimes when you're coming into uh, into a berth. Not so much when you're out at sea, you just give it a bit of a shove, and it's fine, it'll soon catch up. But obviously, when you're trying to manoeuvre into tight spaces, you want the engine and the gearbox to be as responsive as possible. So that will be the next major job. There's no oil leaks, they're absolutely fine. Other than that, the, the really sound engines, they just need a little bit of tender loving care to bring them back up to what they should be. One other thing we did was we fueled the boat from empty. 
and Andresa used to cost just under €4,000 to fill from empty and the summer loving now costs under €400 to fill from empty and that gives you about the same nautical mile range as Andresa had on €4,000 worth of fuel. So then that's it for now guys, that's it up to date. I will get some more work done as the guys come in to service the engines. I think Celtic Marine are going to come over this week and actually service the engines. They're not going to do all the major engineering work, but they are going to service it. So they're going to change the oil filters, they're going to change the oil, they're going to change the, uh, the water strainer filters and clean them out, make sure everything's okay for that. Uh, and so we'll have oil filters sorted out, fuel filters changed uh, and oil change this week. Um, I think that's going to be done. It's either Wednesday, Thursday, but I'll let you know. And if I'm around, I'll get, try and film them as they're, do, they're doing it. Alessandro, the, uh, the Brazilian engineer who works with Celtic Marine, who's the number two man there for now, he's going to be number one there soon because I think Mark's going to retire. And uh, then these guys are going to do a great job. They always done. They've looked after my boats for years and they do a great job. So that's it for now, guys. I'll see you on the next one.